Hi kids, it's mama. I'm here in the kitchen and I am getting ready to make a lasagna for dinner. And so I thought I would make one for each of you at um, to eat at home and I'll freeze them individually. But anyway, I got to thinking, well, maybe I will make a video of how I make it because I know when I'm dead, you're gonna be like, oh my God, I wished I paid more attention to how my mom cooked stuff because I remember her lasagna was the best ever. So I am going to teach you how to do it. So real quickly, I would like to show you a couple things and I have to figure out how to flip the camera around. Okay, I can't figure it out. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to splice. Okay, here are the items you're gonna need to make your lasagna, a pound of ground beef, a jar of marinara. I don't really like it flavored with anything, but feel free, garlic, basil, whatever you want. Um, San Giorgio lasagna noodles. I always use San Giorgio. You can try others if you want, but make sure it's not the ready to, ready to bake kind because you're gonna bake it yourself. There's a difference. Um, I always use Maggio, Maggio, whatever, um, ricotta cheese and you can use any brand you want it just doesn't matter i just always like to use the premium stuff whole milk though is important i would use that and not skim also a block of mozzarella the big block and again whole milk um some at least a dozen slices of provolone you're also going to need an egg and grated parmesan for the ricotta and some spices and i'll show you how to do that when i get to that point okay so use your biggest pot i'm using a really big pot because i'm making a triple batch but use your biggest pot like that one would be sufficient and take a little bit of salt from the palm of your hand just like a little bit of salt maybe you know it's like a teaspoon tablespoon whatever and dump it in the water i've already done that and then we're going to boil okay so i wanted to tell you you do not have to if you're just making one buy the giganto ricotta you can buy just like the smallest one not too tiny though because i love ricotta so you want to make sure you have enough of it so anyway some things you want to do while you're waiting for your um water to boil is brown your ground beef and you want to cut up your slice your mozzarella and you're also going to prepare your ricotta so i'll take you through those things step by step but i know you're not retarded so i'm not gonna make you watch me cut the mozzarella i'm gonna do it but then i'm gonna show you everything i am however going to have you watch how I mix the ricotta because that's very important. Hey, look at my tattoo. <laughs> Just slice the mozzarella like so and about yay thick. Lengthwise. Okay, so ground beef, some oregano, Some salt and pepper, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and on high. Now, the important thing I wanted you to know about this part is don't break it all up to hell like you were doing taco meat. Taco meat, I like to get every lump out and just have it very ground up. This, you wanna leave a little bit of chunks in. So I'll show you closer to the end product what I'm talking about. Okay, for the ricotta cheese, dump it into the bowl. Add some salt. Some pepper. And a generous portion of grated parmesan it's my favorite part that's what gives it that yummy also some parsley not oregano parsley and I don't know how I'm gonna do this okay well I'm getting ready to crack an egg and put it in there and one egg 
I have a double batch, actually a triple batch, so I'm gonna do more than one egg, but you put one egg. Okay, so there's my eggs. Now, I just wanna mix. Now that I've got that mixed, it's gonna be thinner. And you're gonna have to just taste it. Mm, that's good. For whatever reason, I always end up putting more Parmesan in it. I don't know how to tell you what it tastes like or what I'm looking for, but after you put the Parmesan in it and taste it, oh my God, then go ahead and put a little bit more Parmesan in and taste it again. And I think you'll see what I'm talking about. Mmm, delish. Okay, our ground beef is working pretty good. So, you know, if you wanted to add some garlic powder to this, you can. If you wanted to use sausage instead of ground beef, you can. You can still just use a pound of sausage instead of ground beef. I prefer ground beef. That's how I grew up eating it. That's what I like. So that's what I use. And so you can see here what I mean. Leave some chunks in. They're like uh, size of a a big, not a, well, not one of the big gumballs, like the size of a grape, maybe. Bigger than a regular size gumball, whatever that is. So, this is just about done. I'm going to drain it and then dump it in the pot with the sauce. So, you can go ahead and put your sauce right out of the jar into the pot. Drain your ground beef when it's done cooking and then dump it right into the pot. The meat is in the pot. Go ahead and stir it in the sauce. Now, I always put this back on the stove for a little bit just to warm it through. You don't need to cook it. You don't wanna cook the hell out of it. It's gonna bake in the lasagna in the oven for like 40 minutes. So you don't even have to put it back on the stove if you don't want to, you just don't. I just do because that's how my mom taught me to do it. And again, that's how I've always done it, but not for long. I'm just gonna put it on like medium heat for probably 10 minutes or something, but that doesn't even matter. Don't worry about that. Just, just warm it through. Okay, water has come to a full boil. That's a full boil. Nothing less than that is a rolling boil. That's what you call a rolling boil. Okay, so once it's at a full boil, you wanna take respect getting these into the pan. You want to take care and respect them because you don't want them to break. So, stagger them when you put them in one at a time go this way go that way like put this one in like that put that one in like that reason being is you don't want them to break you don't want them to stick together you can see they almost immediately get pliable when you stick them in the boiling water but they're not that pliable you don't want them to break so again take care with them so they don't break crisscross them and mine are just going right in because this is a huge pot. You're going to have a very smaller pot, so you're going to see what I mean. They'll need to be crisscrossed and leaned up. They'll, they'll be sticking out of the water for a minute, and then you just give them a stir. They'll get pliable, and they'll all go down into the water. All right, I'm going to jam on this, and I'll be back. All right, everybody's in the pot. Give it a stir. Bring it back to a rolling boil. As quick as you can. I gotta get the lid on this. Oh no, there it goes. So once it's at a rolling boil, again, cook them for 10 minutes. No more, no less. 10 minutes at a rolling boil.
All right, 10 minutes at a rolling boil. Man, it's a big pot. It's hard to get, keep your water boiling. Hard to get that lid back on there. Give it a stir, keep stirring it. You don't have to continuously stir it, but make sure that you don't let the noodles stick to the bottom. So you have to make sure you stir it like once every one minute. Give it a stir. Um, you know, 10 minutes isn't that long. So make sure you stand there every one minute. Give it a stir. Make sure you get the bottom. Don't want it to stick to the bottom. Some of them are going to break. You'll see what I'm talking about. They're not all going to stay perfect. Some of the little edges along there is going to come separated from the big flat part. It's okay. I'll show you why, and I'll show you what we're going to do with those broken ones. All right. Let this go. I'll be back soon. You're going to set your oven to 350 degrees. You're going to put a little bit of sauce. I always just reserve some or use another jar. But you're going to want to, oh hell, hold up. <laughs> Woo! I got the big pot rolling. I'm going to leave the lid off because that bitch will boil over. All right. All right. Anyway, put a little bit of salt in the bottom. Shake it around. You just want to coat the bottom a bit with the sauce. Like so. Oh, also very important, a nice loaf of Italian bread. It's just almost mandatory. You have to have some nice bread to go with your lasagna. Okay, this has come to kind of a boil. I had it on medium. It's only been on there a couple minutes. So that's fine. I'm done. I'm turning that off. This has about 38 seconds. It's going to be done. Here's what it looks like. Nice and pliable. And these are going to be so hot. So I have my sink ready and I'm going to dump them into the strainer. You'll only need one. Okay, as you can see, they are super, super, super de duper hot. So, I always, always, always run cold water over them. Because you're going to need to handle them immediately. So, to avoid getting burnt, run some cold water over them. Going to do the trick. Okay, let me get these prepared and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now you have to separate your noodles, and by that I mean you're going to take each one. See now these, see how it's ripped up? So I I separate them into groups. If it's not perfect, I put it into that group because I can cut it and use it as the guy that's going to go this way. We're going to build a lasagna. First noodles are going to go this way, second layer are going to go that way, and so forth. So, technically, that one can be used as a perfect noodle, but we'll just see how many we have. So, I'm going to start grouping them. Let me see if I can find a bad one. Yeah, like here's a bad one. Like that one just kind of ripped, you know, not perfect ones in that pile, perfect ones in this pile. He's got a little, but so stack them and I'll show you why. Let me get that done and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have a nice stack here. I'm gonna put some cold water on these to keep them from sticking together while I'm working over here. So this one you can see is pretty jacked up. It's got some tears in that end. 
It's got some tears, but totally, totally usable. We don't want to throw it away. We're going to use it, but it's in the, and then most of the, the pile with the deformities or whatever, I always keep the deformities at one end because if I'm going to cut them short to put them in the pan, I know that I have a good end over here. Okay. So first thing we're going to do, we have that. So we're going to draw from our good pile and we're going to do three. 13 by nine pan, three fits perfectly. All right, so we're gonna get three in there. Beautiful. Now we're gonna go, we have our meat sauce, we have our sliced mozzarella, we have our ricotta that we sliced, and take note of the parsley. You should be able to see parsley in there. If not, you don't probably have enough in there. And provolone. So we're gonna do like so. And then I always put the mozzarella separate, like a triangle. Then I always take the ricotta and plop it on top of the um, provolone. Three plops. Then you want to spread your meat sauce. around like that, not too much, just enough. So that's one layer. Now I need five for the next layer. So I'm gonna do like this here and put one in there. Now I'll know around where to cut it. I just stunk my fingernail into that. So I'll know right where to cut it. This is hard with one hand, but I'm gonna make it work. So there was my, so right about here. <coughs> don't do this. I know that I'll use all these, but when you're doing it, don't do, only do five at a time because you don't wanna use up all of your <clears throat> noodles you don't want to cut all of your noodles and then find out that you needed more long ones so just do like five at a time as you need them so there's one two three and really it doesn't matter because the only one you really want to save three beautiful noodles for is to layer on the top and I always end my lasagna with the three going this way. Okay, now, this is where you get your hands dirty because you want to mash it down <clears throat> gently to make sure that you're nice and flat for the next layer. All right, now, at this point, I can see that I did my provolone here, here, and here. So now I want to alternate. So now I want to do my provolone here, here and here and again alternate with your mozzarella there there and there and again plop your ricotta on top of the provolone a little bit more and Another layer of ground beef. Make sure that you don't neglect the corners of the pan because you don't want to get those dry. And then of course, dad is gonna watch the news while making your video because he's rude and he don't be caring. All right, <clears throat> so now we did five noodles that way. So again, three this way. So we're going to do three more this way and five more that way, probably three more that way until we get up to the top. And then we have a lasagna. Remember after every layer to squish it down. You probably have to wash your hands between every layer because you'll get your, 
it's going to squish out but it's important to keep it level as you're going so after you add your ingredients smush it down okay so now i have it built and i'm just going to take some of that sauce that i used from the jar without the meat in it and cover the top with it make sure you get in the corners so your corners don't dry up yeah and this is just straight from the jar i didn't cook it or nothing remember it's going to go in the oven so it's just all right now oh i need my other hand okay and then grated parmesan all over the top oregano cover it with foil put it in a 350 oven for uh, 30 minutes or 45 minutes you can take it out and stick your finger in there and see if the cheese is melted and uh, you should be good to go I'll show you the finished product a couple things I was thinking about while I'm sitting here waiting for it to um, bake was to tell you was that you don't need a lid on your pot when you're cooking your noodles um, I only use that because I have a really large pot and when you have that much water in a pot it's hard to keep it at a rolling boil so I needed to use the lid you don't have to I typically don't the other tip I wanted to tell you is don't be afraid while you're working with it to wet your noodles and you know, like pour more water over them um, keep putting cold water on them to keep from sticking together in that strainer usually I want to get them sorted out onto my cutting board right after I use the cold water and that'll keep them from sticking but if you find that they stick together just run them under cold water and they'll usually separate just fine um, also don't handle them if you still see steam coming off of them because they're gonna be super hot I've burnt myself before it's why I'm telling you that so just make sure all the steam is off them before you try to handle them I kind of stir them while they're in the strainer gently because you don't want to tear the noodles while I'm pouring the cold water over them okay turn my ovens off I had that in there for about 40 minutes so 40 minutes is usually enough to get it to where you want it and by that I mean the cheese should be melted see how it's melted you just want to check your layers with a knife or with your finger if you're brave enough um usually a knife and just make sure that your cheese is melted so these are good to go I've got three beautiful pans so the most important part is to let it sit at least 10 minutes 10 15 minutes 10 minutes should be enough if you're starving um, uncovered for 10 minutes don't cut into it right away because your layers will just it, you won't be able to get it out of the pan they'll just slide all over and it won't keep that nice stack that you see in a lasagna and this should give you one two three cut one two three and then one two so you should have 12 slices i mommy mathed see how i did that so 12 slices of lasagna so i'm gonna let yours this is gonna be me and dad's i'm gonna let these two cool completely and I'll cut them and package them individually and oops, 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 ouch. So I'll cut those and package those in 12 slices for each of you and freeze them. So you can just pull one out and defrost it in the microwave when you're ready to eat it and you should be good to go okay here's the finished product nice layers came out perfect see nice and cheesy and that's how you make a lasagna so i hope you enjoy it my lasagna is the best lasagna i'm not being i'm not being 
a braggart, but my mom taught me how to make it and she learned from the only Italian lady in her neighborhood, probably in all of Richwood. And she used to go down to her house all the time and eat there and she learned how to make it from her. So this is a recipe from a real Italian and I hope you enjoy it. Oh, and just one more thing. So when you take it out and you wanna eat it, take one slice out, put it on defrost in the microwave for about a minute and then take it out, cut it up like you would before you go to eat it, cut it up into squares and put it back in the microwave to reheat it for about 30 seconds to a minute should do it. And I mean, you'll know, just check it. And then um, if not the outside, if you just try to heat it in a solid block, the outside will be, uh, pasta will get hard and the inside will still be cold. The cheese won't be melted. So just cut it up before you reheat it. All right, great. So that's my tip for the day. And I hope you enjoy it. Please, if you like this video, hit like, subscribe, and I'll be able to bring you many, many more. All right, check you later.